Welcome back to the Midterm Rental Mastery Show. My name is Tanisha Epps Spencer. I have to get used to saying that. And um, you guys like my background. This is one of the newest properties that we purchased subject to the mortgage. And um, it's now a midterm rental and furnished and all set with the renter in there. So, and this place is really nice. And guess what? I didn't do it. Anyway, side note. So today... I am starting a new series with a friend of mine, and I'm going to bring her on the stage here in just a second. She's going to tell you about what she contacted me for and um, kind of what our series is going to be, which is a conversion of a room to do rent by the room, which you guys know I don't personally do rent by the room uh, because I have too many people in my house to do rent by the room. So that is not going to work out well for me, but this is a perfect scenario for her. So I'm going to bring my friend CJ on the stage and she's going to just talk. We're just going to have a conversation and she's going to walk us through the room that she's looking at converting and we'll make this into a series so you guys can see what it looks like with a room and turn it into a rental. So here is my friend CJ. What's up, my friend? Hello. How are you doing today? Oh, you know. <laughs> Same as the other day. <laughs> Just Another work. busy day, right? Another day. Yeah, you, yeah, you know how it goes for sure. Okay, so um, we were talking before we got started with the video about kind of how our conversation is going to go. And I just wanted to start with like, how the heck do we even know each other? Oh, very interesting. So I, let's see here. I, I am a empty nester with a 19-year-old um, son. So I started working in the insurance industry and through that, through working in the industry, we met at a training in Arizona by chance. So that was really great because my first time traveling to Arizona and uh, Tanisha seemed to be well versed in what we were doing and I knew nothing. And so then I kind of leaned into her and was like, hey, do you know what you're doing? If not, I don't come help. And like always, she's been that person in my life since then that I can go to for any kind of guidance or help. So that's kind of how we met. And we were in our, should I say our age, Tanisha? We were in our early 20s. And so. Uh, I, have, I have zero <laughs> problem telling people how old I am. Because <laughs> nobody ever believes it anyway. So what do I care? It's totally so, it's totally fine by me. We, which has been one great partnership or friendship, I should say, because it's been 20 years, basically 20 years. And, um, and we've never lived in the same town. We've always lived in different parts of the country. But we've maintained mm -hmm. a friendship over these years. And that's kind of how we met. And I have a son and she's been very uh, instrumental in helping me raise him, whether she believes it or not. She's kind of a, a mom. She's <laughs> <laughs> a son uh, and doesn't know you, it. <laughs> you've, you've been a great mom, I swear. Just, you know, just Thank looking you. at how some other people manage their children, uh, you're a great parent. So, and I tell you that all the time. So cool. So, yeah. So I know Carisha, again, most of you know that I've been in the insurance industry now 20 years, which actually hit like two weeks ago. So 20 years in the insurance industry, uh, we both started out in claims and um, it's really awesome because I wasn't even supposed to be at that training and look how God works, right? 20 years later and we're still really, really good friends. She came to my wedding. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, you were a hit. You were at the fun table with Pace and all the other people. So yeah, super, super cool. We were so, rocking okay. day, but we kept it live and we got everybody out there on the dance floor, if I'd say so myself. So, yeah, it was awesome. Okay. So, you contacted me about what you thought you might be able to do with a room in your house. So, tell, tell us about that. Okay. So, like I was saying, how I met uh, Tanisha, this is the 19. 19 years ago. <laughs> I bought this house 12 years ago. And so, I've had about 12 years that I've had this home. And now that my son is off and caught out to college, he's gone nine to 10 months out of the year and he's into his sophomore year. So it's just myself in the home. And I was thinking of ways that I can, I was like, I want to, maybe I should get a roommate or ways that I can generate income, but I had no idea how to do it. So there's a room that's really not being used unless he's here. So I have a three bedroom home. It's about 1480 square feet, square feet total. 
So these are really smaller rooms, but um, they're just not being used. And so I reached out to Tanisha and I, to Tanisha and I said, well, what can I do? Um, I don't want to just leave it be and I want something going on. I don't want to be able to generate some kind of form of money or income because there's more going out than coming in, to be honest with you, with the student in college. So Tanisha gave me advice or she can talk more about what she advised me of as an option that I can do to rent out a room. And I was really nervous about that. I had a lot of questions, but um, I've heard horror stories about people renting out rooms or renting out their home. And I just don't have any information about it. So I reached out to her and she eased my mind and is walking me through this process on doing it. And so I'm pretty hopeful and excited about, about it. Yeah, I think this is going to be really good for you. Um, and what we talked about kind of offline was the type of people that you should be looking to have in your place. So um, so CJ is located in Houston, Texas. She's not too far from the medical center, but she also has several other uh, pretty heavy, like big deal hospitals in the area. So for her, based on the fact that she lives in the house and she's going to be living there with a roommate, um, we're going to do a rent by the room strategy in her house but focused on travel medical professionals, number one, because they're professional people, and two, because they have a reason to leave, right? So again, all of my places, I make sure that I know why someone's staying, and I also know why they're leaving. Uh, so I don't look to have those people that want to squat or stay around. Like They might really like my place, but they have a reason to go back where they came from. So what we're going to do right now is do a walkthrough of this room, which I have not seen, by the way. It's crazy. I've been friends with you for 20 years. I've been to Houston to visit you, but I've not seen this house in person. Um, so Carisha's on her phone. CJ's on her phone. Sorry, I said your whole name, but that's what I'm used to calling you. So um, she's on her phone. So she's going to walk us through this room um, and what it looks like. And I've not seen it. So this will be our first time. And whenever you're ready, take us on a walk. Uh, down to the room that you're going to do a rent by the room. Okay, perfect. I'm trying to, just forgive me, since I'm new to this platform, I'm trying to figure out how to uh, turn the camera Does around. You, I have no idea. Okay. Worst case, okay. you can always just turn it, and then yeah. I will tell you if we can't see it. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through what it, just so you, just so you guys can get a good idea. I also am a work from home employee, and it's very, very quiet. So I'm going to flip it around. Can you tell me if you can see it? Oh, yeah, we can see just fine. That's perfect. Okay, perfect. So this is walking into my home. And as you walk in, here's my work from home space. And here, I'm going to try to study the camera. Please let me know. And this is my space. Just so you can see what anyone else would see is my kitchen area, living room, and dining room. I have this hallway. Hi. <laughs> and this is the hallway um, in this area, just so Tanisha can see, is a laundry facility, laundry room. Perfect. It's inside. It doesn't lead to outside. And this is a what I would say a private restroom because it's not being used by anyone. And again, Tanisha, this is your first time seeing all this. Yeah. So you know why this is great is because you already have everything in there. So you won't have to do anything but get some extra towels. And then you've already got everything set up. So that's going to be a okay. huge savings because you're not going to have to spend any extra money other than um, other than like basic starter toiletries. Like I usually give people, you know, starter shampoo, conditioner, but they're going to go buy all their own stuff. So everything that you have in there is great already because you already have the shower curtain, the liner, you have the floor mats, you've got everything in there that you already need. Okay. And because this room is not being used you're going to be able to rent this out with a private bath, which will bring you in more money. Perfect. So let's move on to the, to the bedroom. To which, the bedroom. So, mm -hmm, so outside the door, right now you have just a traditional door lock. And what we've mm -hmm. talked about is getting a, a key code lock. So once, once you get that, what we'll do is we'll swap out the key code, the lock, okay. and then it will be just a punch code where they can put in the code and have a locked bedroom. Okay. And let me, right. forgive me while I, I'm going to put the lighting in here and I apologize for not having that fully ready. So this it's, is it's not that serious. It's okay. Like. Okay. So this was formerly, again, a teenage boy's room or a kid's room that has never, nothing ever been done to it. This is an Ikea platform bed. So it does not have a, a box spring. It's just the mattress and it's a full size bed with a matching nightstand. 
And over there is a dresser of what used to be in this space. So all of these things is just like things that were for storage. And here's the room. Of course, there's stuff on the walls. And there's this additional shelving up here that just holds basically junk. And then this is the closet. It's no walk-in closet, but this is what it appears. This is what it looks like, if you can see. And so coming from at this angle here is what the bedroom looks like. And then they have yeah. access. Does that, can you yeah, see no. Yeah, this is great. So let's um, talk about some of the things that are in the room right now. So the first thing is um, you have a window. Great. Mm -hmm. What we're going to end up doing is getting blackout curtains to cover that window because right now there's no curtains on the window. So you're going to get Correct. blackout curtains to cover the window. Okay. And then um, you already have a dresser, which is great. You already have the bed. The only thing that I would potentially suggest is you may choose to switch out the mattress, but if it's a really nice mattress and it hasn't been used much, what we'll end up doing is just putting mattress protectors over the mattress, the same as the pillows, pillow protectors, and then you've already got the room ready, which means you don't have to spend any additional money. So the only other thing I would say, so you've got that nightstand there. Remember we talked about um, potentially doing the refrigerator nightstand. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look that up um, on Amazon and just see what the cost is, if it can fit in that space. So now not only do you have a functional space for a nightstand, but you also have an in-room refrigerator. You just want to encourage people not to do a ton of eating in the room, and, or at least they need to clean up. Um, but otherwise, we'll pull some of the pictures off the wall. We'll put up some you know, basic pictures. I think the, the uh, shelves that you have there are great. Um, you can leave those there. You do not need to take them down. They're not hurting anything. You can put towels on the shelf. Right. Okay. Once you take the things off of there, just put towels on the shelf and then just leave some extra space for the room. The fact that you have a full closet there is perfect. So really, this room is going to be very, very easy. You just got to get some of the stuff out. If I'm you, I would even leave the fan, just put it in the closet and leave that as an option that someone can use. You do not have to make this over the top. OK, um, okay. it this is going to be such an easy room conversion because you have the majority of everything that you need there already. This will probably take you, you know, to pull the things off the walls and swap out some pictures, which you could totally get from either Amazon or Marshalls or TJ Maxx, something like that. Put those things on the wall, definitely the blackout curtains. And this room can be ready in a week or two. It just depends on how much time you want to put into taking the things down and swapping wow. some stuff out. Wow. Okay. 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 Perfect. Okay. So we can take a walk back if you want, um, you yes. know, back to your desk. So now we've seen what um, CJ's room looks like, right? And if we go into the kitchen, they're going to have access to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then the good thing is with your living space, you have a separate living room that's different from where your workspace is located, mm -hmm. which is great. So while you're in the front doing your workspace, there's a kitchen table. So someone could sit down and eat. They have access to um, the backyard. So they can go outside. Do you have seating outside in the backyard? I do. I have a um, a covered patio space. There's no personal pictures up in my home, um, so too much. So I know that that doesn't may or may not affect it, but it is a covered patio, and these yeah. yards are, are very small. So it's just a, a seating. Yeah, and it's perfect. You have you have basically everything that you need to get started. Um, it's just a few things to swap out. And, and that's going to be it. So it's going to be really interesting just to see the conversion of the room. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay. It's perfect. Okay, cool. I don't know if you can hear all that beeping behind me. That's all my housing requests coming in for a Monday. Wow. It's and way this out is of what they would see. And my, my space, if they, if the con one thing I thought about was my space is over here on the opposite side of the home from mm -hmm. their uh, living space, their, what would be their living space. Yeah, that's perfect. I think this is going to be a really good, this is going to be a really good conversion uh, for somebody to be able to come in. So the front door, <clears throat> so we see where the front door is located. So remember I mentioned about changing out the lock. Yes. So this will be super easy. So that top lock where you have the key for the deadbolt, that's going to turn into the slage lock. So the lock that I use is the slage on code lock. It's okay. going to turn into a digital door lock. And then you'll just swap out that bottom lock. Okay. Um, it's going to be a dummy knob or it's called a Georgian knob and that knob just allows it to turn, but it doesn't lock. So all the locking happens on the top lock. 
And then because you have a storm door, you just can't lock the storm door because somebody needs to be able to get into the house. Okay. Um, so you just, you know, you'll just keep that unlocked at all times when somebody's actually a guest in your home. Okay. So yeah, I think, I think this is going to be a good, I think it's going to be a good, uh, a good conversion for you. Okay. One thing I wanted you to ask you um, outside is parking. So currently, and this is my vehicle and my son's vehicle, who happens to be a part-time living person resident here, but they would have option to park in front of the garage on the other side. And this yep. would be my so parking. That's it. Okay. That's perfect. So yes, okay. your parking would be on one side. So if you want to use your garage, great. You just make the garage not accessible to the other person and okay. then um, they can park outside and you'll be just fine. Okay. But yeah. I think this is going to be a perfect, perfect rent by the room opportunity. Okay. This perfect. is going to be great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Hello again, people. <laughs> thank you for taking the time. <laughs> and yes, this is her first time seeing my space. So uh, she made sure I said, well, do I need to clean? Do I need to get things ready? She said, no. So I hope that it can help others that what you have is how you get started in the current yeah. condition. Yeah. So what questions do you have right now? Any okay. questions? Yes, I do have some questions. So one of the main questions is um, that I do happen to have the luxury of working from home, but if there's uh, any noise or anything, or how do you, how do you communicate that? Is that something that you would communicate with the tenant that's there? Like if it's like, I don't, it's very quiet here. Or how do we handle mm -hmm. any kind of noises, anything? I haven't lived with anyone other than my son. So yeah, is that something you, you definitely want to, yeah, you definitely want to let them know that you work from home. Okay. Now you don't have a job that requires you to answer the phone on a regular basis. So that's mm -hmm. a good thing. So your phone's not ringing, but remember you may run into people who are working a night shift. So during the day, they're probably going to be spending a lot of time sleeping. So for you, because you are in the house, you just want to be as quiet as you possibly can, not be disturbing, but you just want to let them know that you do work from home. So you're basically there all the time, right? For the most part. Yes. As long as you let somebody know that up front, you're totally fine. You're okay. And because that room is off to the back, it's not going to be so loud because you do have a good separation in your house. Okay. okay. Uh, Thank you. So that makes sense. Uh, the second question I have, which is a big concern, and I think that as I've mentioned it to family members, they've mentioned what happens if the tenant or I call them a tenant, the renter wants to have company. Like I'd imagine that they'd want to have a, a spouse or even a, a guest or overnight guest. How would that how would I manage that not knowing who's coming in and out other than the person that I'm renting to? Yeah, you can include it in your lease that there are no unauthorized overnight guests. You can tell them up front. Um, unfortunately, I don't allow other people to stay in the house because I'm here too. So if you have someone that wants to bring someone, they can go get a hotel for a night if they choose to. But as long as you tell people up front what to expect, then you don't have any issues. It's when you don't tell them what to expect and then they think that something can occur and it can't because you don't want somebody else in your house, which is totally understandable. So you just have to let people know up front. And the more you let them know up front, like the I work from home, you know, you're sharing a room in a space with someone who lives here. Unfortunately, there's no authorized overnight guests. As long as you tell those people that up front and they agree to it before they move in, you're good. Super simple. Okay. okay. Uh, I wouldn't be charging this person any utilities or anything like that. So if they have any, if they have any special requests or anything, I guess I'm not thinking about if they have anything, all that needs to be put up front, right? So everything's clear before they move in or do I get to, yep. yeah. You just let them know that utilities are included, okay. right? And so the good thing is you're living in the house so you can manage the utilities. So if the utilities start to go crazy sky high, you're mm -hmm. gonna have a conversation with them about that because you're living there. So you expect that your utility bill is gonna go up some because you have an extra person there, but remember, they're not even there most of the time. If they're working an overnight shift, they're not using utilities because they're not there. And the majority of people are sleeping during the day. So your utility bills really shouldn't be excessive uh, because most of what you're going to get is from you being in the house. Okay. Um, one, I think one kind of final question I have is, do I get the opportunity to interview them or, or, or vice versa, them interview me? Absolutely. You would talk to them ahead of time. And so when we get to the part about listing, I'm going to have you use the furnished finder site, which is not a booking site. 
it's a lead generation site. And so you'll have people that are reaching out to you because they're interested in staying in your place. You will have a conversation with them up front and I will talk you through what that conversation looks like, what information you should be requesting from them so that you can work through the vetting process. Okay. 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 So, well, All so right. those are my main questions I've had. And I think that just, I can't, I couldn't seem to figure out how that would work. So, okay, cool. Well, I am um, going to kind of end this this part of the series. So this is just part one, everybody. So again, my friend CJ has a house in Houston, Texas that she's living in. It's a three bedroom, two bath home. Her son has gone off to college. So she's home all by herself. And she's looking to figure out how she can generate income using a room in her house as a rental. So we're going to walk this through a whole series from start, which again, I didn't even see that room up until the point where it's ready to go to get rented. So stay tuned, please continue watching, like, and subscribe. And thank you, my friend for joining and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.